Hello again YouTube, now for something completely different, um, just a sidetrack. This is a synthesizer which makes noise obviously, but it has MIDI out and MIDI in. Now MIDI is a serial protocol using a UART um, dating from the 1980s as far as I remember and has A baud rate of 31,250 bits per second and it uses a five pin DIN connector so this is all very 1980s there is actually another version of MIDI on the way I think it mentions it in I think it mentions it here it is It's certainly in the pipeline because it hasn't been updated as far as I know since the original 1980s. Sorry about this. MIDI 2.0. So it's pres been presented I don't think it's been released yet according to that. It's been announced, it's been it's obviously been worked on. So anyway, for the minute we're on the original MIDI and it uses the five pin DIN connector. So we want to look at look at what's coming out on the serial. So I've just got a little the necessary connector here hooked, hooked up to a a cheap logic probe. And I'm going to just check pulse view and I wonder can I well you can see what I'm doing I'll, I'll press a key you'll see what happens so if I run this and press a key and I am decoding this at the 31250 uh, it's 8 8 data bits, one star bit, one star bit, no parity. And LSB first, so the least significant bit is first, and that's about the height of it. So if we look at these messages, I have configured this to go out on channel 1. So 9 is a note on message, and it's on channel 0. So the least significant bit goes first. So the, this is kind of in reverse order, but the 9 is note on. Zero is the channel, which is the first channel. And this next byte of information is the note. And the last byte is the attack, I think. Something like that. So 90, note on. And then 80, 80, I should say 80, it's he this is hex. So 80 um, is note off. Again, note off is that nibble, and then the zero zero is the channel. So the first channel, note off, 43. So that's the note we just turned turned on. So every time we hit a note, there is a note. On, we press a key, sorry, on the keyboard. Um, there's a note on message, a note off message, and that's MIDI on a very simple UART. So, I want to use the Cinnamon Bon to um, mimic that. So, let's look at... Let's look at the circuit. We need... Uh, 
it's actually detailed in there's lots of information on the there's lots of information online like this is using a a transistor as a switch so one of the pins pin 4 is just constantly connected to 5 volt reference through a 220 ohm resistor the other pin pin 5 is the data pin and this is just coming from a UART of a microcontroller and that's biasing the transistor it's using this transistor as a switch and then the 220 ohms is switching this so that's the, the data going out um, so we can do pretty much the same I'm not going to use the transistor I have uh, optocouplers um, this LTV series of optocouplers so it's just a little four pin optocoupler um, with a an LED on one side and a photo transistor I suppose on the other side it's just a simply switch it's, it's it's a switch the same as the transistor switch that the, that the other circuit is using there. I'm just, I have a, an optocoupler, so I'm just using that. I have it in stock. Now, one thing in the data sheet, the, it's got response fall times. So, and it's, it, these are measured with a 200, oh, sorry, a 100 ohm load. So we're going to use a 100 ohm load, but let's get into this circuit. We need uh, so I'm going to use my DSPIC 33 development board um, so I'm going to use pin D0 for that because I have access to it it's quite simple and we're just going to go through A current limiting resistor and then into our optocoupler and that's simply going to go to ground on the other side of this is if I can draw a bit of a transistor something like that we are going to go to plus 5 volts and actually this plus 5 has to go through a 20, 220 ohm resistor and out to pin 4. Now the, the data sheet mentioned the load resistor of 100 ohms so we're going to put a load resistor down there of 100 ohms just to keep everything the same and out of this we're going to put another 220 ohm resistor and out to pin 5 which is the data so that's simply the circuit it's exactly the same as the circuit that was used in this article I'll put this the link to this article in the um, notes for this video but he's using a transistor, I'm just using an optocoupler, same, same, but different. So, that done, we need code. So, because I'm using my development board, I'll just use uh, the Libby Soup Utilities, and we're going to put this on a timer. So, at an interval, we're going to send out a message, just to test that we can do this. Um, I'm going to initialize the UART for the MIDI port. So this is just a little function and the lib eSoup library has a UART functionality so we're just going to use the, those API calls. So we set up the pin that we want to use, D0. Uh, we're not going to receive any GPIO at the minute, we'll come back to that. And This function calculates the mode to fill in the SFR registers. Some SFR registers in the DSPIC33 set up the parity, the stop bits, um, what we are it idles. So we're going to idle high and eight data bits, no parity, one stop bit. That's more or less the, 
it calculates the um, the necessary SFR bit and puts it into this mode. Now this is all in a structure for the MIDI port. This, the LibEasoup API uses this structure, a pointer to this structure is passed around just and this is the, the all the properties of the UART. So we're setting up that value in the um, MIDI port structure. So we've got the, the mode for the, the, the DSPIC 33. So then we just fill out the board 31250 and there's a there's a callback function in that MIDI port or the UART structure which if you transmit bytes you can get a callback to say that transmission is finished. I don't care when it's finished or not so I'm just set it to null. The other thing is if we're receiving characters on a on an interface then we want to be able to process those characters so that is the callback to process those as we are not receiving any data we're just transmitting data set to null. So basically that's all set up and we reserve that. So now we're reserving that MIDI struct th that UART structure that we've just declared and set up. So now pin RD0 should be set up to receive a 31258 data bits, no parity and one stop bit. And main just calls that. So we initialize the library, initialize the MIDI port, and then we're going to start a timer, 10 second timer. And it's we're going to repeat it every second. So the interval is 10 seconds and it's a, a, a periodic timer. And we're going to call this callback function expiry, which we declared that we forward declared it at the top. So the compiler's happy. It's an expiry function. And we just start the timer and then drop into an infinite loop. And all the infinite loop does is do, do the normal process any events coming from the library of code. So the only event we're going to get is this expiry. So when we get this expiry, the note on is a 9. We're going to put it out on channel 1, which is the second channel. And this is the note, don't know what it is, 3C, hex. And this is the volume or attack of that note. Again, I don't really care. All I'm going to do is just transmit that. So that's our note on message going out on the UART that we've already set up. So this UART structure. So pass those three dates, bytes of data to that UART and wait 500 milliseconds. So just delay momentarily and then we'll send the note off again on channel one, which is the second channel. And for the note, we've just started a minute ago or half a second, half a second ago. And then transmit those three bytes. So we should hopefully get something that resembles this note on, note off pattern. Three bytes, three bytes. So that's the code. Now back to this and I've done, wired up the, um, you're not gonna see it clearly here I suppose, but five volts is this red. So the five volts is going to one side of the optocoupler and there's a 100 ohm load resistor to ground and then there's a 220 and out on pin five. And then the five volts is going through this 220 which you can't really see and it's going out pin four. And that's it. I mean, this this, this orange is the this, this serial data from D0. It's going through this current limiting resistor just to, so we're not um, overloading the, the LED. And so we changed our input. So instead of going MIDI out, now we've connected MIDI in to our little serial port of the optocoupler. And this is powered on. So we should be getting a note on and note off every 10 seconds. So we have to make a few changes here at the configuration. Middle, mini in is on port one by default. So we've got to set it to port two, which is where we are. And to play from MIDI in, we have to change mode to a keyboard mode. So then hopefully that's our 
serial message going out from the UART of the DSPIC33 just through an optocoupler. Now the, the DSPIC33 is a 3v3 microcontroller but this development board that I have there's there's a few lines of I.O. and each line is, has ground 3v3 and 5 volts. There's also a 12 volts connector as well. So depending on what you're connecting that you've got access to the various um, power rails that you might need. So the output, the data output from the, the DSPIC33 on D0 is 3v3 but the optocoupler is switching 5 volts from the 5 volt line. And that's it. So we're going through MIDI out into this synthesizer and creating one note every 10 seconds. Not exactly rocket science, but it is just a look at serial ports. And we will go further with this because I have a few things I might try and play with. I mean, this could be the start of a sequencer. And... It would be a very simple sequencer. You look. I mean, if you could, you could actually code up to send out the various notes for "Happy Birthday" or any tune you want. This, um, if I change out of this mode, this synthesizer has a very small um, sorry. I have got to. This synthesizer has a very small, um, I have the clock set to internal, right. So back to this and that's the sequencer of the actual device here, but we could actually encode, make up a sequencer if we wanted. That's not what I want to do, but look, just in, as an example of what you would do, an external, an external sequencer you could plug an external sequencer into the MIDI in connector and drive this synthesizer. That's MIDI out from the DSPEC 33 and in to a synth. I think I've got a few ideas for this and I want to go the other way as well. But I'll leave it there for now. Thanks a million for watching and hope it's of some use. I'll put the links to the various like I say, there's loads of information out there on the protocol. I think the protocol is open, so it's it's readily available. So hopefully it can provide a few links. But I mean, if you were played with uh, an Arduino or on another processor, there should be loads of libraries of code there for just driving um, a UART for the MIDI spec. It's an old spec, so 1980, so that... And the, the baud rate and the, the connector are all very old school because of the processing power that was available in the early 1980s and to keep the price of synthesizers at the time low it wasn't really a heavyweight protocol by any stretch of the imagination but it does what it does and it works so once again thanks a million for watching and I'll see you again